Step four is the determination of seismic design category or SDC of our structure. Risk category was based on the occupancy of our structure. STS and ST1 were based on the site class and the hazard level of our site. Now we will combine these two information to get a new parameter which is called the seismic design category. This parameter will have an effect of everything. It will combine the risk associated with the structure as represented by the risk category and the effect of site class and the effect of hazard level SS and S1 because SDS and ST1 already have the effect from SS S1 and the site class. So we will combine them all information along with the risk category to assign a seismic design category to our structure, SDC to our structure. So we will establish that uh, SDC for our structure and that will be using these two tables and this 11.6 section of ASC 7-16. So let me show you that uh, sorry 11.6 this is that relevant section and I will directly uh, directly tell you the summary of that you can read through all of the code provisions later. The idea is that uh, there are different seismic design categories starting from A, B, C, D, E and F. A is the lowest seismic design category the structures which have uh, very low associated seismic risk and which is subjected to a very low level of seismic hazard we can assign a seismic design category of A to our structure those structures. On the other hand E and F are the most severe seismic design categories and uh, the structures which are uh, very important which have a high risk category and at the same time they are subjected to a very high SDS and SD1 value they are assigned with a seismic design category of E or F and then in between are the intermediate categories so let me just draw like this severity of uh, risk and hazard based on this information we assign seismic design categories so for E and F there is a particular rule which is defined here in this 11.6 uh, I think yes here in these lines for E and F you just need to check S1 value. If your S1 value is greater than or equal to 0 0.75, 0 0.75 and at the same time your structure is given a risk category of 1, 2 or 3 then you will assign the seismic design category of E to your structure. So E means that your S1 is greater than uh, or equal to 0 0.75 plus at the same time you have the risk category of 1, 2 or 3. If these two conditions are fulfilled then you assign a seismic design category of E to your structure. Similarly if your S1 value is greater than 0.75 G obviously whenever I refer to the SS or S1 value or SDS or SDF1 value uh, it will be in the G units. So if your S1 is greater than 0.75 G and at the same time your risk category of your structure is uh, 4 you will assign a risk design, seismic design category of F to your structure. Right. So F is this one. For the first four seismic design categories, uh, there is a there is there are two sets of tables uh, which I will show in the next slide. So for these four, you go to these tables. So it is table number uh, 11.6-1 and 11.6-2. So you go to these two tables. Uh, for selection of the seismic design categories from A to D. For E and F you have to check this criteria. right? So let us now go to these two tables and uh, see that how the seismic design categories are varying 
depending upon the sts st1 value or depending upon the risk category of the building so just like in ubc 97 we were having the concept of seismic zones zone a uh, zone zone 1 zone 2a 2b and then 3 and 4 uh, here we had the concept of sdc seismic design category so uh, although there is no direct uh, correlation between them but roughly you can say that for example e and f uh, is approximately equivalent to uh, seismic zone 4 and similarly you can say d is equivalent to seismic zone 3 then 2b 2a and then seismic zone 1 so this is a rough comparison obviously uh, the parameters and everything is now changed those zones in ubc 97 they were uh, the function of the pga value uh, design pga value so different ranges of pga were having uh, different uh, zones but here the seismic design categories are the function of the ss and s1 and the function of the risk category of the building and uh, for e and f actually it depends on the s1 value but for a to d now let me go to the table 11.6-1 and 11.6-2 these are the two tables in asc 7-16 which will guide us in selecting the seismic design category of our building so it simply says that uh, let's say first is the 11.6-1 if uh, the risk category of our building is 1 or 2 or 3 and if the sts value is less than 0.167 so it's not not s ss or s1 now it is sds and sd1 for these two tables so from a to d uh, the seismic design category will be the function of sds and sd1 so we will apply these two criteria and finally select the seismic design category so first is 11.6-1 first you uh, go for the risk category let's say it is 1 or 2 or 3 and your sds value is less than 0.167 then you pick a seismic design category of a if your sds is between 1.0.167 or 0.33 and your risk category is this one then you go for b for the same range of sts if your risk category is 4 your seismic design category will be c and similarly if your sds is greater than 0.5 then uh, either your risk category is 1 2 3 or 4 your seismic design category will remain d right so uh, sds based on the sds value you will and based on the risk category you will select one stc from a to d for your building from using this table similarly using st1 also because you are, you have two parameters sds and sd1 so using sd1 you will go in this table 11.6-2 and then uh, again based on the ranges of sd1 values and based on the risk category of your building you select any seismic design category which is applicable to you from a to d right for example if your um, st1 is in this range and your seismic design category is uh, 4 then you select seismic design your risk category is 4 then your seismic design category is c right so you apply both of these criteria sds criteria and risk category to this table sd1 criteria to this table and select seismic design category 1 from table 11.6-1 and one from table 11.6-2 and then whatever value of the seismic design category you get take the severe category from both of these criteria for example if your uh, risk uh, seismic design category from the first table is b and uh, from the second table it comes out to be c then your final sdc will be c not b because c is more severe so from both of these criteria take the severe of the seismic design categories right if for example from first table you get a seismic design category of c and from bottom you get d then go for d option right 
because D is severe than C. So this is that step. So let me again go back to that slide. Step four is what? Selection of the seismic design category. This, this will be very useful in all of the later seismic analysis and design provisions. So code will be referring again and again to the SDC uh, of your structure. So it will have provisions like for SDC A, B and C you do this thing. But for D and uh, E for example you do some other thing. right? So all the later provisions will be dependent on what uh, seismic design category of your building is. So this is all about step 4.